Mystic, Medium, or Misleading Maids The Fox sisters carved their own special place in the 19th century history of America. The so-called spiritual seances reached celebrity status long before spiritualism was founded as a branch of modern pseudoscience and are remembered today as its unlikely founders. Welcome to Nutty History, and today we will tell you how sisters fool the whole country with their claims of metaphysical communication and stunts which inspired an independent movie, the foundation of pseudoscience, and episodes of shows like Supernatural. During the winter of 1847, 15-year-old Margaret Fox and her 12-year-old sister Katie, living in the hamlet of Hydesville, New York, came up with an excellent prank to frighten their mother, also named Margaret Fox. They tied strings to apples to drop them rhythmically on the stairs in a repeated fashion. This mimicked the sound of ghostly footsteps. Now, what started as an innocent prank soon became a scary menace for the Fox sisters' parents. The home with a married couple and six daughters was plagued by thuds and cracks reverberating throughout floorboards, ceilings, and bedsteads. The daughters were sent to bed as early as 6 p.m., but what Mr. and Mrs. Fox were not aware of was that little Margaret and little Katie had learned to make popping, cracking, and thumping sounds on their own to echo throughout the house without leaving their bed. While Mama Fox grew more and more paranoid with the belief that their farmhouse was haunted, her husband John Fox was still somewhat dismissive. This is when the Fox sisters came up with the devilish trick of making the rapping talk. On March 31, 1948, Margaret and Katie performed the big finale of their prank. As the rapping sounds began to haunt the house after dusk, Mrs. Fox was forced to search the house with a candle. When the poor lady reached the bedroom of her daughters, she witnessed something extraordinary. Her daughters, Katie and Margaret, were talking to the ghost. They would clap and snap their fingers, and the ghost would answer with knocks mimicking their pattern. Now, this was supposed to be the end of it. They enjoyed the horrified look on the face of their mother, but in their adolescence, they did not expect what came next. Mrs. Fox was now convinced their farmhouse was haunted, and she started telling all her neighbors about it. With Mrs. Fox bringing neighbors to their farmhouse to witness the haunting, the girls were put in an awkward position. If they confessed now, the whole family would become the subject of mockery. So, when all the neighbors gathered around in their house, the spirit had to put on another performance to prove its existence. Despite being under a lot of pressure, the girls managed to create a narrative of a spirit telling them of a murdered peddler being buried under the farmhouse basement with the wrapping. The foxes and their neighbors planned an excavation to find the remains, but thanks to heavy spring rains and a nearby flooded creek filling the excavation pit, the investigation was halted. However, water wasn't the only thing spreading in Hydesville. Rumors of hauntings and sightings began to float around the neighborhood as the hysteria grew, and soon the Fox Farmhouse had a long line of anxious, curious, and downright hysterical visitors seeking the help of the Fox sisters and pleading with them to act as mediums for the spirits. The new seances soon became not just the talk of the town, but in the News of Newark, a pamphlet published based on investigations of attorney E.E. E. Lewis, word spread about the sisters across the counties in the tri-state area. This is also how Leah Fox Fish, the eldest sister of Margaret and Katie, came to know about what was happening at her parents' farmhouse. Leah was a divorced mother living in Rochester. Upon hearing the news of the haunting, she rushed back to her family's home. But her motive was more than her family's well-being. An avid reader of early spiritualistic and mystic literature, Leah was actually interested to find out what this occasion might mean to her struggling financial situation. She wanted to come up. When Leah arrived home, she managed to lure the supernatural secrets of the farmhouse from her younger sisters, aka they told her the real truth. She realized what a fantastic entrepreneurial opportunity this whole affair was, and she began working on how to monetize it. By the 1840s, America's obsession with death was spread all across the country. New cities were expanding at an alarming rate, but sanitation and population control was lagging. This had epidemics and the mortality rates rising all across the country, and unhealthy work environments were no help either. Death touched every family during this period, as one-third of newborns died before reaching their first birthday. Epidemics claimed adults on a regular basis, and work hazards left millions of relatives mourning for the untimely death of their loved ones. 
Leah saw this fascination as a prospect, and she pointed herself as an interpreter of the spirits while Margaret and Kelly became the mediums. There was no turning back for the reluctant pranking sisters as Leah took control of the whole operation with an iron fist and led her sisters like lambs. The early customers were friends of Leah, and the sisters convinced them with really intimate and personal details about their dead relatives. This turned the clients into ardent promoters, and word spread fast. Some locals also outrightly rejected believing in the girls' so-called powers and accused them of trickery. The nearby Methodist Episcopal Church expelled the family from the congregation, and they blamed the girls for practicing unholy magic and wished ill upon them. The Rochester clergy also railed against them with the accusation of witchcraft and heresy. Still, all this negative publicity was still publicity for the Fox family, and the business just kept getting more popular as satisfied customers grew with every meeting. The request for seances was soon in such large numbers that the sisters had to divide the job. Leah led every meeting, which was now conducted by Margaret and Katie separately to split the workload between the two. Margaret, at this point, was also not happy about how Leah was making everybody work against their wishes and tried to revolt, but as the money stopped coming in, the Fox funds dwindled, and Margaret had to grudgingly agree again to perform medium duties for the financial security of the family. In desperation to grow their market base even bigger, Leah rented Corinthian Hall, the largest auditorium in Rochester, for a mass public demonstration of her sister's powers in 1849. The most popular newspaper of the city, the Rochester Daily Democrat, reported the announcement of the event with a hint of satire and warned its readers that the event would expose the sister's con for good. The very first performance by Margaret at Corinthian Hall made the newspaper eat its own words in the next edition but the scathing criticism did not stop despite accepting the sight of the ghost in the hall. This caused a rift between the supporters of the Fox family and their critics, and a committee was formed to closely inspect the medium, Margaret, and the interpreter, Leah, on future performances. With every performance, the Fox sisters left the committee members more and more baffled. It didn't matter that they were asked to perform while being placed on glass, pillows, or after being thoroughly searched for any kind of device or mechanism they were hiding under their clothes. With every trial the Fox sisters won, the crowd grew larger and larger at the next performance at Corinthian Hall. As more and more committee members gave up and began to admit to the abilities of the Fox sisters, the non-believers grew restless and hostile. On November 17, 1849, the performance was interrupted by firecrackers lit by the non-believers. The smoke, well, it almost caused a riot, and police had to intervene to ensure the safety of the Fox family and their allies. In one way or the other, stunts at their Corinthian Hall performances gave Leah what she aimed for, popularity. Even though a lot of it came in the form of notoriety from the criticism by major media publications, it still created more buzz and demand for the services of the Fox sisters across the nation. The sisters began to tour outside of Rochester in 1850, and after visiting Albany and Troy, they were invited to Manhattan's most illustrious literati gatherings. This is where Margaret and Katie performed at the revival of the famous author James Fenimore Cooper's sister and gave a descriptive account of her fatal horseback riding accident which occurred almost half a century earlier. The accuracy of the events made the celebrated author a fan of the Fox sisters instantly. All the celebrities who were present there that evening were historian George Bancroft, poet William Cullen Bryant, essayist Henry Tuckerman, and the New York Tribune's George Ripley, who reported the events of the evening in his writings that the incomings and outgoings of the spirit were not at all in control of the sisters and thus were otherworldly. This report caused a lot of other publications to retract past criticism of the Fox sisters. The New York Herald, which was known to publish scornful and disgusting reports about the Fox sisters' scam, wrote that their reporter believed that the spirit apparitions were real and that sisters Margaret and Katie were incapable of any sort of deception. This new media acceptance raised the Fox sisters' success to a new high, and it elevated them to celebrity status. The success of the Fox sisters opened the door for a lot more copycat mediums, and seances started popping up from Vermont to California. Spiritualism began to grow popular as a religious movement, and a lot of them, like Mrs. Sisson and Lucinda Tuttle in Boston, 
and a teenager, Coruscant in Buffalo, started to attract a large number of gatherings as well. Soon, spiritualism also became a platform for reform movements because of its growing impact. As most mediums were females, suffrage activist Amy Post, who was a close friend of Leah, used spiritualism to grow awareness for female voting rights. You gotta get in where you can fit in. The religious movement also was praised for its lack of discrimination and segregation by reformers of its time. Spiritualism was hailed as the brainchild of the Fox sisters, but soon they found themselves outdated by the very movement they created. As the other growing mediums upped their game with new tricks and effects like levitation and table tipping, which left their audiences in awe and splendor, Katie and Margaret's rapping had lost its charm. Despite a lot of new mediums being exposed and caught with their fraudulent techniques, Margaret and Katie lost their position as the champions of spiritualism and were often pushed off the center of the stage to make way for new trending mediums. This affected their demand as well as their egos and it caused a severe rift among the sisters who found themselves quarreling with each other as well as with their supporters. Now Leah, who always insisted on treating their tricks as real spirit manifestations, struggled with keeping up with her sisters, and as their success dwindled, Katie and Margaret found solace in alcohol. This was made worse by the fact that Margaret suffered heartbreak when she lost her fiancé, Dr. Alicia Kane, a famous explorer. This only added more burden to the guilt she had about deceiving people for years. Katie's personal life was not much better either, as she too was widowed. In 1888, Margaret was offered $1,500 by the New York world to tell the real story. She accepted the offer and opened up about the truth of the fraud they played on the American people for years. She not only confessed her own and her family's deception, but she accused the entire spiritualism movement of being built on the premise of lies, trickery, and deceit. When Leah heard about Margaret's confession, she rolled her eyes and called her sister a liar. Katie, on the other hand, confirmed everything Margaret had to say as she sat in the audience at New York's Academy of Music, where Margaret made the confession on stage. Spiritualism advocates did not take the confession and accusations lightly, and they hit back, accusing Margaret of making up the confession story for the $1,500 she received. They also called out Margaret and Katie's alcoholism, and they tried to discredit them. The storm created by her own family and an entire religious movement made Margaret retract her confession within a year, but the damage was done. The sisters had lost their goodwill and were no longer welcome in the celebrity circles of which they were once the highlight. Leah died in 1890, Katie died in 1892, but Margaret, who perhaps carried the burden of guilt the most, lived another year, only to die poor and relying on friends' charity. Spiritualism still considers the Fox sisters as their pioneer and inspiration. However, history remembers them as sisters who fooled an entire nation. What do you think of the Fox sisters' life story? Were they con artists, entertainers, or true mediums? Tell us in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to Nutty History to watch more entertaining videos like these.